obviously do. Uh, good to see Jabari on the court again today. Yes, yeah, uh, definitely. And will he be around a similar uh, minutes limit? Uh, where that will that be raised at all? Yeah, we're trying to keep him in the same vicinity. Okay. And you know, when it comes to you know, the last game you guys had against Brooklyn, obviously uh, the defense really made things difficult for them. How, how do you replicate that today? Well, the one thing that was, you know, going back through the game, the uh, the third quarter was very difficult in terms of, you know, they got very aggressive, um, you know, not just, you know, we know that they're going to shoot a high volume of threes, but they were very aggressive uh, attacking the paint, uh, trying to get inside the defense, whether it was to create a kick out for another shot or to get to the rim and score. Um, you know, they had close to 50 points in the paint. And the one thing that we know is we cannot give both. We cannot allow a team to get all the points in the paint and uh, shots at the three. Joe, how did Jabari make out? How did he feel afterwards? And how did you feel like everything went? Did it go exactly as you planned it with the 15 minutes and the spurs that you played him in? I thought uh, he did a really nice job. I thought he allowed the game to come to him. Uh, didn't force the action. Uh, was very solid defensively. Uh, did a really good job of not pressing and you know it's a tribute to him uh, being able to go out on the floor after such a long layoff. We saw uh, Kilpatrick a little bit in last game and I know he's a guy that you guys really like. He was here last year. What do you think he can bring to this team when he does get his opportunities? Well the thing with him everybody knows that he's capable of making shots uh, you know scoring the basketball they'll, they'll look to the three. I know the number the percentage isn't exactly where uh, he or we would want it for right now but we know what he's capable of and you know, especially when he goes out there, he had a good, couple of good looks the other night. We know he's capable of knocking those down, and then again, be solid on the defensive end. How important was Jabari B going forward? What do you expect, and and and, and uh, how will he contribute to you guys securing a spot in the playoff? Well, the biggest thing is every, it's a team game, and you know, when we can have everybody healthy, you know, it's one of the well, it's a couple of things. One, obviously. Uh, the skill of everybody playing together, but that's what's important is the familiarity of everybody playing together. And when you don't have everyone on the floor, it's another game where you're missing that opportunity to have everyone out there. So uh, it's happened in the past where you know Chris was out, uh, you know then Jabari went out. You know now we're in a situation where uh, Malcolm's out, and the mentality is next man be ready to step up. But how difficult is it to fit for a new for you know, not a new guy, but you guys who have been there to fit in again? Right. Well, that's kind of what we were saying earlier is that, you know, the game has a rhythm and a timing to it. And that's what was great to see with uh, Jabari the other day. He allowed the game to come to him. There was no rush, uh, great pace about what he was doing and, uh, you know, contributing on both ends of the floor. Yeah, you went with a lineup the other day for a little while. Bledsoe, Snell, Middleton, Parker, and Giannis. You know, what, what are you looking to see from that, that group with the possibility of maybe playing them more down the road? Well, you know, the thing about our team is that we have a lot of versatile pieces, guys that can play. And, you know, I think the league has gone that way as well. You know, a lot of teams will play small. Um, that having been said, I think for anybody that steps out on the floor, defensively know your assignment, know, know the player's tendencies that you're guarding, know what the system is and the game plan that we're trying to execute. Offensively, share the ball. If, the op if there's an open man, he gets the ball, and we try and get the best quality shot that we can get. And I think in most of the games we've done that. And when we do, usually positive things happen. Yeah, and with that group, do you want to see a certain amount of them together in time from more spurts before you might try them for a longer, a longer stretch? Well, you know, you're always going into games where you've got a rotation in mind, but that's why I don't get, in, get caught up in rotations too much because the flow of the game is going to dictate what's hap what happens. So we have the thought of what's going in, but if a player gets in foul trouble or somebody, you know, we had this happen uh, with the game where Malcolm got into foul trouble, Tony uh, had to leave the floor, so we had to sub somebody else in, and so it's always a mentality of be ready. But that having been said, you know, looking at matchups, we keep an eye on that as well, and we know that rotation-wise, uh, we have guys in certain spots, and we like what we're seeing so far. How, how comfortable is it? Janice is always the main option for close game. How comfortable is it to, as a coach, to know that you have a guy like Jabari, is, and you can mix it up with Janice? Well, I think we've got multiple players that are capable of making plays, and I think the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that they might score the ball. 
the reality is they can actually cause a problem for the defense, draw them in, whether it's bringing everybody into the paint or drawing two defenders, and they can kick it to the open man. So uh, it's nice that we have versatile pieces and multiple players that can create shots or create opportunities for themselves or others. What does it take on the way Ton has been playing this year? I mean, I know that there was a lot of expectation after what he did last year. What does it take so far? I mean, he seems you know, to talk to him, I think it was two weeks ago, he seemed frustrated by his play, I and mean, he was expecting better from himself. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's a, that's a sign of a good player, right? Somebody that wants to play better, do better. Uh, as coaches, we're always going to demand you know, more and you know, want guys to get better and improve to help themselves and the team. I mean, ultimately, it's always about the team. I think he's done some nice things here recently. Uh, you know, the biggest thing for us as a team, this doesn't fall on him uh, exclusively, we need to rebound the ball better, and that's one area where he and several other guys can help us. But, but I mean, uh, if you had to find an explanation as to why it has been a difficult year for him, did he put too much pressure on himself? I mean, is there a matter of getting, letting the game come to him? I mean, what is your explanation? Yeah, no, I think what happened is last year at this stage, he hadn't played a lot of minutes. You, when you look at it, he's, he's in his second year in theory, but hadn't played much. It wasn't until later in the season that he started to get minutes and then into the playoffs. So uh, he's learning. Everything is a new experience in certain ways. No, I shouldn't say it. That's, that's not fair to say everything, but a lot of things are new. Uh, he hasn't you know, had the experiences out on the floor that everybody has had because he's only, like I said, he's only in his second year.